for this episode of Let's Talk Jinx Patch 13.22 Notes. We talk about Jinx, changes that might affect Jinx in terms of other AD carries because of the bottom lane matchup and stuff like that. Skins, adjustments, even I guess ARAM adjustments if you really go there and you're a casual player, which is fine. But we're going to talk about all that in this patch, except for there wasn't really any Jinx related changes. Maybe some other AD carry changes that could affect Jinx, and even then it's kind of light. Like, there's a Janna change, for example, which might make Janna meta, which as a Jinx player, depending who you ask, they like the peel, you know, supportive kind of champion, so that could be very interesting to discuss down below. But, like, if we look at the nerfs here, right? No, I mean, I know Neela is, a, a like, a melee AD carry, but I really just don't see that many of them. We saw one at Worlds, and it worked out, actually, so maybe we'll see more, so I guess we'll talk about that. But, to be honest, there's not a lot of bot lane stuff. Like, Janna here, stats and abilities adjusted to fit the playstyle of a more aggressive harasser around her W and auto attacks. I thought that's what, that's how I played Janna anyways. It didn't always work out uh, because of the range and, and you know, Janna against something like a Blitzcrank, which I'm not particularly good against uh, when I play support. Um, doesn't go well for me. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to say that I end up a corpse, but I probably end up as a corpse. That's why I play AD carry on purpose and not support, but autofill exists, so let's continue. But we'll go over these stats real quick, though. So with the mana going up a bit, the mana growth going down, the health growth going up, the armor going down, so she's going to be squishier in lane against other, you know, physical damage dealing champions, uh, the base attack damage going down, the attack damage growth going, everything's going down. How is Janet supposed to thrive and be a harasser if everything's, everything's going down, you know what I'm saying? Not just a couple things, everything. Except I guess the attack range and the, and the base mana. Okay, I can't read. But the point is, so like on the passive, Janna no longer gains bonus movement speed while facing allied champions, but Janna's basic attacks and W deal bonus magic damage equal to a percentage of her bonus movement speed. Okay, I'm glad they linked it to move speed because I feel like that's kind of the point of Janna. The Howling Gale, the mana cost is going up across the board, the cooldown is going up, the minimum damage is going down, but it's changing by percent AP. So the damage over here is higher, but it's only 35% of her AP, while the damage over here is lower, but it's going to be 50% of her AP, which overall, the minimum damage actually gets best at max rank. So when you max Tornado, it's actually going to be higher than it used to be and have 50% AP over 35% AP. While the maximum bonus damage, which is like launch distance, I'm assuming, um, that they're talking about, uh, it looks like the maximum damage in, is actually bonus is lower. So they want you to use this in close range now instead of long range? Isn't that what that means? Maybe I'm wrong, but this, I'm, I'm assuming this is what it means. Minimum range damage and the maximum range damage. So if you use it for far away, it's not going to be a very good poke tool anymore because that damage is not going to really be there. It's like, it's like using Zap in melee range versus using Zap at its maximum long range. Or the Super Mega Death Rocket even would be a better example at melee range versus long range. But the opposite of that, because that's what this looks like it is, but I could be reading this wrong. I apologize. The W, the one they want them to harass with. The cooldown is actually being decreased across the board. The mana costs are actually being decreased across the board. The damage looks like, yeah, bonus uh, AP, tailwind bonus damage. Slow duration is only going to be two seconds. And the path, path, yeah, Daffy Duck. Uh, bleep, uh, bleep, uh, bleep. The passive move speed is no longer removed on cooldown. That's interesting. So there's a lot of good Janna changes here. The Eye of the Storm, which is the shield, remove shield no longer decays and stuff like that. So if you're playing with this as Jinx, the thing about it is, Janna's going to be not, obviously not a mage support going in there like Bran trying to blow people up. But it does mean that they will be, you know, slowing because the this does slow. The slow duration is going down, but it still slows. This is what people want to max. They want people to max. And they want Janna to kind of bother people because Janna is ranged after all and not a melee uh, support. So that could be a situation where your Janna is now just poking down the enemy for you while you farm. If you get ganked, she'll protect you. Use the tornado to knock people away. And use the ultimate to knock people away. And it's still somewhat of a passive lane. It's just that Janna might be you know, bothering people a lot more than she would have been before. Instead of just playing back, throwing out the occasional tornado possibly and stuff like that. So as Jinx, your job will basically be most likely to farm up because the damage isn't like huge. It's not like a Blitzcrank hook where you might be a kill lane now. But it is something that could be nice to help them worry about getting poked down while you safely farm up to get your items. Because if you can't get kills and gold that way, you can still get gold through minions and get your items and still be disgusting come mid to late game. Neela, the Q bonus attack speed is decreased, the R damage over time is decreased, and the maximum total damage is decreased. 
Neela has been a strong performer for a long time and that strength has finally caught on. This patch for lowering her ability to single-handedly carry team fights with her whip blade. So this is what I meant earlier. I don't see a ton of Neelas, personally. Uh, like, it's not like an every game situation. But they have been strong for a while. And as of Worlds especially, if you don't know, Worlds is going on still because of the new format. It actually started later in October and will still be going the next couple weeks. But uh, they were finally played and it was disgusting. And now you know how that works. Everybody's like, oh, they were always this strong? And so now they're starting to, you know, catch on. So uh, the bonus attack speed on the Q is going from 10 to 60% to 10 to 50%. And on the R, I'm not going to try to pronounce that right now, it's too early and I'm tired. Uh, 6, 120, 180, 112 bonus AD to only 80 bonus AD. Uh, the maximum total damage is going from 185, 345, and 505 to 232 bonus AD to the new changes only having 200 bonus AD. So against uh, Jinx, now here's the funny thing. Personally, I hate playing melee into range. So you would say Jinx, like Caitlyn, being you know, two of the more farther range AD carries, the lane phase for this is going to be suffering if not paired with like an Alistair or something, and even with an Alistair. As long as you got, say, like the Janna that just got changed, you might be fine. And this lane phase might be yours. But I keep saying might instead of a definitive answer because it kind of depends a little bit on the player. If they're all in, if they're duo, if they got synergy, stuff like that. It, I'm not going to say you'll just run away if you always play Jinx into this champion. That would be stupid of me to set you up for failure like that. It's like a father sending their kid out to, to do something knowing that their kid doesn't quite have the ability to do that thing yet. Yeah, I'm being supportive, but the end result is death. So, with that being said, be careful in this matchup because depending on, like, especially if you don't ward, you get ganked by the Jarvan or something, right? This can go very badly for you as Jinx. However, you do have the range advantage, so use that range advantage in ways that would make the Neela suffer. Sometimes poke the Neela when they step up to hit their CS. Try and harass with the AoE on the rocket form when they're in their minion wave, and you don't have to even hit them directly. Stuff like that to kind of chip away at their health, so by the time they might see an opening to try to go in on you, their health might be chipped away so much that it's a bit risky. So that if you don't have a Janna, and let's say you have a Leona, or something that is a kill lane like a Thresh, uh, that Neela has to second guess if they want to dive you, even if they could, because they might not have the health pool to sustainably go in and try to kill you and get out alive because they are melee. Now, yeah, a lot of their kit enables that a bit more easier than, say, if you were bullying maybe a Scion or something, I don't know. But at the same time, that those are little things you can maybe do to help punch them down a little bit if they are coming out swinging even after these changes. Senna's Q damage and healing has been decreased. Uh, I don't know how many people are playing AD Feasting Senna, or uh, I think it's called Fasting Senna, I forget the exact, I mean, no, it was Fasting Master Yi and Tarek. So this was Feasting Senna and Tom Kench. I don't know how many people are playing that anymore. Oh, my voice cracked. I don't know how many people are still playing it, but if they are, then you know, the Q damage and the healing is still being decreased. And, but if it's for support and you're playing with a Senna, for example, most likely you weren't relying too much on their Q damage and healing to win the lane. It was mainly on you. But still being able to be healed up, if healing is decreased, but it's not gone. Um, and it's basically targeting lethality, for example, too, which depending on the Senna was building crit anyway. So a little things change if we're playing against this as well. If they're playing crit, they're still going to build up, build their souls. If they're playing lethality, it's going to be a little weaker. So that can be really nice. Seraphine has some passive damage adjusted. The Q cooldown is increased at lower levels and the W shield is decreased. These look like they are targeted at support Senna. So the thing is, if the passive, the damage per note is going, it looks like, up but the per level AP percent is going down. The Q cooldown is actually being increased, so for those artillery round hits, and the W surround sound uh, shield is going down, basically on the percent bonus AP that they're getting. It wants them to be squishier. You wanna really build those items that will help your AP ratios go up, essentially. And if you're playing with Seraphine, she's like a not as squishy Sona. You're playing against Seraphine, not as squishy Sona. What does that mean? Sona is one of the easiest supports to harass because her health pool is super low. Seraphine, not so much, and she has longer range in certain of her abilities, to, you know, the, the empowered version of it. Even following up with one, if you're playing with one, can be a little difficult because it depends how long they caught some with that range, and you can throw the uh, flame chompers depending on how far back you are. In a lane like this, you can play not super aggressive, but you don't want to play too far back that you can't follow up with their CC. Because when they do land that CC, it will be important that you chain that with your Flame Chompers if you want to try and get a kill. Otherwise, it's like the Janna lane and you kind of play it a bit passively for farming and healing up and the whatnots. And if you're playing against that, 
look to try and push them into their tower, but don't look to try and get kills because most likely they're going to play passive and just try to make you overextend and rely on their jungler to come gank you and get kills that way, depending on who the AD carry matchup is. Tom Kench bonus magic damage decreased. So this is part of the feasting Senna strat, I think. This, this is mainly aimed at that duo synergy more so than anything else after Tom Kench just changes. We do see him in the bottom lane still, but we also see him in the top lane. And it looks like this change is just aimed in a general sense. So the bonus passive magic damage basically on the acquired taste is what you got to worry about. So if you're never even, you know, getting hit by tongue lashes or he's never getting close to you, nothing actually changes whatsoever. If that's something you're usually used to is getting devoured, then in fact, that is something you will have to deal with. The Heartstill skins are releasing, including Heartstill Kane, Heartstill Cassante, Heartstill Ezreal, Heartstill Set, Heartstill Aphelios, Heartstill Yone, Heartstill Proceed Yone, and Breakout True Damage Echo. Delicious. So that being said, you might see Ezreal's and Aphelios's in your game because of these skins dropping, in which case as Jinx, the matchup for Ezreal and Aphelios will stay the same because none of those three champions had any changes. You just might see those champions for the first couple days of the patch because those mains of those champions are going to want to play these skins. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next because I'm going to have a lot of kinks. So until next time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching and enjoy pizza responsibly.